In our last video, we talked about what it meant to take the square root of a number. Well, we can actually extend this idea even farther to something called an nth root. So there's more roots than just a square root. So to explain this, we're actually going to back up and just recap just a couple of the basics about square roots. And this will help us better understand what it means to take an nth root of a number. So thinking back to what we just talked about regarding square roots, we would say that the square root of a number b would equal a if you squared a to get b and that was a little wordy and a little confusing but um, but you know we talked about it and it wound up making sense for example the square root of 9 we found was equal to 3 because when you square 3 that's the number that gives you 9 so now we're going to think of this in a slightly different way in this video though. When I say a squared, the way I really want to think of it as a times itself um, once, or, or there's two factors of a is probably a better way of saying it. Two factors of a multiplied together would give you your value for b. Three times three would give you nine, for example. Well, if you had a third root or a fourth root or a fifth root, you're going to be looking for a number multiplied by itself, um, not with two factors, but maybe with three factors or four factors or five factors that would give you B. Now, you might say, well, well, Devin, how can you denote the difference between all these different roots you're talking about? Well, there's actually something in the square root notation that we can't see with our eyes, but it, but it's there. In this little nook right here, it's understood to have a number 2 right here. Now, we don't normally write the number 2, but it, but it is there. It would be kind of like, you know how we say with fractions, you know, you can write a number 5 as like 5 over 1. There's always an understood 1 in a denominator, but we don't normally write it. Normally, we just write 5. Well, it's kind of the same idea here. There's a, always a 2 in this radical here if there's no number present. Um, but there is a two, there is a two there. And what that two represents is that's, that's what's um, equivalent to taking a square root, which means you're gonna need two factors of A multiplied together to give you B. But on the other hand, if it was the third root of B, and that was equal to a value, what that would mean is you would look for a number that if you multiplied it by itself twice, or in other words, you had three factors of a, a times a, times a again, that would give you b, All right? So this is what's called a third root. Now, the third root we actually use all the time. It's actually very, very common. So this guy actually has a unique um, special name. This is what's called a cube root, a cubed root. So you have square roots, corresponding to a 2, cube root corresponding to a root of 3. And so in general, if you have an nth root, could be 4th root, 5th root, 6th root, 7th root, whatever, equal to a value, what that means is that your radicand b is obtained by taking a times a times a times a times a, times a in total times a times a times da 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 da. I'm not sure how many n is in this example, so we'll just just write the pattern there, and this will be a total of n times. All right, now I understand all that's abstract. It's hard to kind of wrap your mind sometimes around those abstract ideas. So let's do a couple practical hands-on examples, and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. So I'll take those down. And then here's two different examples. This is called a cube root, as we said earlier, because it's a third root. And this is a fourth root. So to figure out what these are equal to, we'll start with the cube root. Um, this means we're looking for a number times itself, times itself. So we want three factors of this number that would give us 27. So now, uh, just between me and you, um, normally when you're asked to find a cube root or a fourth root or whatever, um, it will work out nice, meaning the value that you're looking for here would normally be an integer value like two or, or four or one or something like that. So let's go through just our integer values and see if we can get anything that get, get uh, multiplies to 27. Let's try one times one times one. No, that doesn't give us 27. How about two times two times two? Let's see, two times two is four, four times two is eight. Nope, that's not it either. 
Uh, let's try three times three times three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. Fantastic, we found it. So what that means is that the cube root of 27 is equal to three because three to the third power gives us 27. So it's very similar to that definition of the square root, only instead of a two, we've got a three. Let's try the same thing, the fourth root of 16. Fourth root of 16, so we're looking for a number times itself, times itself, times itself. So we have four factors this time because it's a fourth root that's gonna multiply to give us 16. One times one times one times one, no, that's not gonna do it. How about two times two times two times two? Two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, there you go, we found it. Now make sure we understand that these have to be the same factor, you can't have one times two times four times, you know, whatever, it's, it's gotta be the same factor because that's the only thing that's gonna equal two to the fourth power to give you 16. It has to be the same factor repeated um, so that it will be to the fourth power. So anyway, so now we understand square roots and any other type of roots, cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, etc. So anyways, hopefully that video helps you better understand nth roots.